too slow. So now that we've introduced the project, why don't we go over a little bit more? As you can see, right there is the gesture sensor. Now, some of the gestures you can use are to increase the volume of the music, decrease the volume of the music, left and right to change tracks, approaching to mute and unmute, and also spinning your finger counterclockwise to pause and resume music. Now that we've gone over that, why don't we go ahead and see what materials we need to do this project. Nos, come help! So here, we're going to laser cut our design out. Depending on the type of laser cutter you use, your design uh, might be more accurate or less accurate. The more accurate it is, the easier it will fit together. With the files that we provided, have the components very close together. This is good as you won't waste much material and you can continue to use the wood or whatever material you choose to use for future projects. My friend Nosk is going to go over what components we need and how to assemble the gesture control kit. First up is Arch. Arch is an embed enabled development platform that has an Arduino form factor. Next is the Grove Gesture Sensor module, which can do nine different gestures. So, in the earlier section, you saw us cut these out. These are from a three millimeter thick wooden board. We also have two 75 millimeter standoffs. We had to extend these a little bit to fit the project, but these are still very easy to find. And they're M3s. So make sure you get M3 screws. Speaking of that, we have four M3 screws. We have three M3 rivets. These will help secure the arch. And we have three M2 rivets. You only need two, but we were afraid we'd lose one. And toothpicks. We also have glue to help secure the wooden frame together. And a screwdriver to, of course, screw in the screws. Make sure they fit the M3s. Now let's do the assembly. First, we're gonna secure the arch on the baseboard. Go ahead and line up the holes. Then we'll grab our M3 rivets and push them through. This is usually very easy to do. There we go, nice and secure, not going anywhere. Next, we're going to secure our Grove sensor with the M2 rivets. Now, make sure that you have it in the right way. The sensor should be facing outwards and also the connector should be facing up where the plus sign or volume increase sign is. As you see here. Let's go ahead and put in these rivets. All right. At this point, we suggest you connect these. So take your Grove cable, plug it right into the sensor, and then plug it into the IC square, or I squared C port, or I2C port. And now they're connected. We're going to set this aside for a moment and we're going to work on the sides. We're going to take our 75 millimeter standoffs, put them into the two middle holes with the M3 screws. Normally, you can hand screw these in pretty decently, but once you do get them hand screwed in, make sure you tighten them with the driver. All right, next, we're going to place the top board on. Should almost just click into place. 
Depending on the quality of your laser cutter, it might be easier or harder. Now we're going to pop in the front plate, push through the back plate, and finally the bottom plate. And as you may see, Nosk is having a slightly difficult time pushing it in, but if you wiggle them around, it will just kind of all fall into place. So here you go. All assembled almost. But now we need a glue. So the glue will really help hold the sides together and the top. So again, the sides and the top you want to do the bottom plate. Do not glue in. And there you have it. The board is now, glue, is now all glued. And we need to let it dry for at least five minutes or more, depending on the type of glue that you use. The bottom plate, we're going to want to actually use the toothpicks. You'll break the toothpicks in half and you'll push them through the hole on the side of the side legs and they will secure the bottom plate. The reason you do not want to glue the bottom plate is so that you can always pull out the board and repair a broken component or maybe pull out the board for another project in the future. So now I will show you how to deal with the software. First, you should log in or sign up to Embed. They have an online IDE that I like. They also have a downloaded version. And we're going to open up this gesture keyboard. Link is provided below. And import it into our compiler. This will take several seconds. There we go. Uh, so you can rename it. We're going to add test to ours. And then we will import. And once this happens, it will open up the folder containing the files. I'm going to go ahead and check main.cpp real quick. Looks like everything's there. And we will compile. On the online IDE, when you compile and when you finish, you'll download the binary to your downloads folder. So I'm going to open up my downloads folder. And I will copy and paste this file. There's copy. Next, I'm going to go to my computer. And I have the Arch plugged in right now. But if I hold down the long, uh, the reset button for about three to five seconds, it'll appear as CRP disabled. There it is. And I can open this up, see the old firmware on it. I'm going to delete that and put on our gesture control firmware instead. And now I press the reset button just very quickly on the board and it will be ready to go. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe to Seed Studio and also to visit our community website at seed.cc. And that is Seed with three E's. Please comment down below if you have any feedback or questions. And we hope to see you again soon. Keep on making. Bye.